Hello, hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, and welcome to a new guide, and again a SSTO guide. However, this time we're building, as you guys can see on the thumbnail and in the title, an MK3 SSTO. So, um, I think I have. Well, actually, I haven't really built any working MK3 SSTO before, kind of planning and trying this video out. And yeah, so beforehand I'd like to tell you guys that there is also a music version of this entire process, so just mm, some text on the screen sometimes and mainly music in the background which will be linked in the top right corner in the info box there. So if you want to, don't really want to listen to my me bubbling around, um, then you can just go and click that thing and enjoy the music whilst I build this. So, and in this version we have some commentary so that I can explain what I'm doing. So, first of all, main body, a cargo bay for payloads of course, some liquid fuel, and some adapters, those big wings now being added, and on the side of course first, those two external fuselages which just increase the fuel capacity of course. Um, then I went, as you can see, with a double wing design. Um, first, I thought about building a box wing, so where we close off the wings again, where the fuel tank is now. However, I decided to um, angle both wings together so that we have some connection over there with the engines where we placed Raptors. In total, as you can see there, um, we have six Raptor engines and two Whiplash engines and four nuclear engines and some yeah well those whiplash engines actually are pretty important um for gaining the first sp gaining speed before well in the lower parts of the atmosphere to reach this what was it 400 ish meters per second threshold after which the rapier engines really engage hard and give a lot of um thrust here in the cargo bay um we have we have the docking port which will be for our t flight and our entire mission empty actually and I will be talking about the cargo bay actually a little bit later in more detail well mm, about the performance I mean so anyways now back to the screen we are now adding landing gear we, I decided to add supportive landing structures um, on this on the very side of the yeah outside on the wing so we have more surface area to land on now adding some air brakes to obviously help braking and maybe maneuvering and slowing down in the upper parts of the atmosphere during the re-entry and so on and so forth adding some OMS um, orbital maneuvering system aka RCS thrusters so that we could dock speaking of docking for those who were paying a really lot of attention in the in the cargo bay we have one of the new docking ports so the um, extendable airlock so this will actually be able to dock perfectly like the real space shuttle well real this is no replica of the space shuttle whatsoever um, yeah now adding some more intakes to increase the air which we have available we have one air track in the front and all those um, ram intakes on the side of course as well and now quickly going over the engineer's report on the bottom um, on the bottom right to check whether everything's looking good. Now setting up some custom action groups where you guys can decide for your own. And by the way, if you want to copy this, feel free to build this yourself. So as you can see, I well provided the speed build of course so that you can see how I build it. And if you want, you can kind of go with the same design or change it yourselves. Um, by the way, ch changing the design, if you decide to build something and um, improve up on it, feel free to comment down below for either more um, guides that you'd like to see or just uh, text me whether you or just uh, t tell me what you have built there. Anyway, so now that's out of the way. Oh, by the way, if you want uh, Discord as well, they can talk to me pretty much all day long if you want to. <coughs> now that everything's out of the way. And we have here beautiful um, takeoff there, throttling up the engines, contracting brakes, and not yet, but soon we will go up into the at the end of the runway. We don't have enough lift, or well, not really enough lift to get off it before the runway ends. But with this small drop there, we get airborne pretty easily, and we have a pretty good thrust weight ratio, which you also can see in the um, top. 
speed out the right um slightly to the right of the altitude meter and the cool engineer redux there almost a two thrust to weight ratio which is really great now in the upper parts of the atmosphere getting ready to switch the rapier engines sooner or later and engaging the nuclear engines as well already now switching over to the closed cycle mode because we were pretty much out of fuel well out of um, air I mean and now pitching up slightly higher as you can see aiming for 20 degrees there um, I actually thought during the during the flight that pitching up a little bit harder would be a good idea but in the end it was actually better to keep it at 20 degrees like I actually even did because this way we can just burn for pretty long and using the nuclear engines to get us up apoapsis above the atmosphere without really a lot of air resistance and earlier I just opened up the cargo bay to show it is empty and we are now at apoapsis circular rising soon we will be in a stable orbit and we'll have still three and a half thousand meters per second of um yeah of delta v left so in this note i'd like to touch on the um cargo bay settings uh cargo bay like it is empty so you can add instead of having those three thousand meters per second left which we will now use to get to the moon so it will be a moon sstio and uh, well so instead of going to the moon you can fill up the cargo bay with a payload um, I have actually tested it out, but I didn't record this test flight with a payload of around 6 tons or so, and it brought 6 tons of payload easily into orbit. So that was, was it a fuel, medium fuel tank, a cupola, and a science, uh, science laboratory. So this is easy, this SSGO is easily capable of transporting this kind of payload, payload into a low, low in orbit. But now since I think for a test flight we can as well go for the moon, to the moon in one go of course so we decide to do that to do that as well which will also totally show the capabilities of that SSTO and now if you were to kind of consider or just think about it we could actually add instead of the cargo bay even more fuel which would make this SSTO probably well I think I'm pretty sure um, Duna capable so this is pretty much Duna SSTO as well um, if you add some fuel into the cargo bay, maybe even further, but, but there are no development plans for that at the moment. Maybe I could, well, I could actually do that sooner or later, maybe. It depends how well this video does, actually. So if you really liked the video, you really want to see more SSTO guides, or generally more SSTO videos, type it down in the comments below and I'm definitely gonna do something that goes into that direction so anyways now back to the footage on screen we are approaching the surface of the moon um, the six six two, no, six kilometers up closing in uh, had well we stopped pretty much li uh, pretty early and then just fell well we killed our entire uh, horizontal velocity and then just fell down to the moon now killing our vertical velocity Closing in for landing, now slowing down the footage so that we are at real speed. Or two times speed, no, it's two times speed. And boom, there is a small explosion. Now having a look there, look there, we, we lost our whiplash turbo ram jet engine. Which you might consider, yeah, the landing could have been better. I agree on that note. So, and it was my first attempt, by the way. This is everything in first attempt, actually. I didn't, didn't have to quick load, like, reload anything there which is actually surprisingly good in my opinion i mean usually well not usually but sometimes it takes multiple tries to land on the moon or just land anywhere this time actually first time ssto first time landing on the moon first time worked per uh, works perfectly so i'm definitely happy with that now accelerating on the surface not too much waiting for that um drop down here and there we go up there we go up well and up we go that is um not a perfect start i mean in terms of angle angle we're going into a not perfectly equatorial orbit but well whatever we have enough delta v at the moment as you can see here still a thousand meters per second of delta v left and even some oxidizer um i don't know how well you can see this but this is it's pretty small but there we have an, another 100 units even more than 100 units of oxidizer left which is quite a lot now leaving the sphere of influence off the moon 
and decelerating here in orbit around Kerbin. Actually, I was worried to drop down back towards the moon, but uh, we didn't enter its um, sphere of influence. Anyways, we have now almost, not quite, but almost 300 meters per second left of delta V coming in into the into the atmosphere of Kerbin here. Um, I guess just I don't really have to say anything. I'm doing some evasive, well, ev evasive maneuvers. Oh God, no, no not really, not really. Um, I'm just here trying to bleed off as much speed as we can by turning our craft towards the, well, increasing our drag, that is. Uh, now, now lowering our periapsis again so that we can go for, well, my plan is to slow ourselves down and then re go into an orbit and then go, like, race again and then we can try landing at the KSC. However, here's the biggest problem of this craft. Without fuel, it is not perfectly stable in the upper atmosphere, that is. So, completely, well, not lost control, I'd say yes, I lost control, I agree on that note. Um, I lost control, the craft is entered a flat, not really a flat spin, but uh, close to a flat spin. However, after 10 kilometers, we actually were able to recover it, well, we're able to dive directly down to its surface, which is, in my opinion, we recovered it. Then we just had to pull off and we were in the middle of nowhere, which was not planned. I agree on that. It was not planned to land in the middle of the ocean. However, we can as well test its seaworthiness. So coming in here onto a touchdown in the water, just destroyed a nose cone, but everything went good in the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, of course, I hope you learned something. And uh, on this note, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, Space Sheep, signing out.